Shalom. We are now uh, about to undertake a, a tremendous amount of learning. Over the next three weeks, we're going to be concentrating on the uh, preparation for the Seder night. Um, there's actually where, unfortunately for now, what it looks like we're going to be stuck in outside of Israel without a base on Mikdash for the, uh, for the Seder night. And uh, that's a shame. In Eretz Yisrael, I was, uh, I was privileged to, to uh, for about, uh, I think it was four Pesachs, to be in, uh, in Eretz Yisrael. And uh, it was a tremendous, tremendous privilege. Um, something that I, uh, that I absolutely loved and, and hope to get back to very, very soon. Uh, Pesach and Eretz Yisrael is an amazingly special time. And if we think about why God took us out of Egypt, the entire point of taking us out of Egypt was really in order to, uh, in order to make sure that we were able to live in the land of Israel where we should be. Uh, as great as uh, Miami and Los Angeles and New York and all other places might be, the, uh, where we're supposed to be is really in Eretz Yisrael. Now, what's, uh, what's amazing is that sociologists studying the Jewish people have noticed that there is no greater mitzvah observed. There is no greater mitzvah observed of all the 613 mitzvahs among the Jewish people uh, as the Seder night is. Right? Jews from all over, no matter what, where they live, no matter what level of observance that they have, they will gather Pesach night with their families and have a Seder. These could be people who don't keep any mitzvahs. These could be inmates in jail. These could be workers who work for the president. A famous story in, in 2008, when uh, President Obama was, was running for office, his staff had a Seder, and the president joined them at that Seder. He found out that it was occurring at a, at a hotel a couple of miles away from where he was staying, and uh, he joined them and then promised to do a Seder at the, at the White House if they won, sort of a Lashon Haba in the White House, right? And that's, uh, and that's something that, that throughout the world, Jews always, no matter where they are, they generally sit down and celebrate the Seder. And the same thing is interesting, of all the Jewish books, and we've got thousands of books that have been published since the, 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 since the Torah was given to Moshe and Har Sinai, of all the books, there's something called a commentary and a super commentary. A commentary is a is a, a, a uh, an explanation of the work itself, and then if you write an explanation on the explanation, that's called a super commentary. So, for instance, you have the Torah, and then you have Rashi's commentary on the Torah. If I would come along and write a a work explaining Rashi's commentary on the Torah, my commentary would be called a super commentary. Okay, that's a uh, that's a super commentary. So. Of all the works that we've published, and we have commentaries, super commentaries, we probably have super, super commentaries by this point on different works. Right? I'm standing in a room, I'll, I'll pan the room a little, hopefully I won't be knocking down the room. But just in, in this, is, this is my study, I don't know if you've ever been in here, but this is my study just to show you uh, uh, just the amount, of, uh, the amount of books that I have. Just, and I have books all over my house. This is, these are just the ones that I frequently use. Around my house I have the ones that I... Uh, that, that I uh, Excuse me for the little tour here, but I have, I have quite a farm collection, and my farm collection, as 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 large as it is, is not some of the uh, some of the larger farm collections that I've seen in my time. And the uh, and of all the books that are written, all the commentaries written on books, the number one uh, book that we see that we see commentaries and super commentaries written on is the Pesach Haggadah, and it begs the question as to. What is so special about this festival? What is so special about this night? Jews who don't keep the laws of Pesach, whose house are full of chametz, who don't keep kosher, who will make sure to go out and eat chametz on Pesach, will generally sit down for the Seder. And not only that, but we find that people keep the laws of Pesach and the laws of the Seder like, uh, like no other time. Right? Jews who are generally lenient in their lives will be very strict when it comes to Pesach. Some will refuse to leave their homes and eat anywhere else but in their own houses because of the strictness of the prohibition of eating chametz. But Pesach is so popular because it really formed us as a people. We were, we were defined for hundreds of years as the children of Abraham. Right? Avram had built up a following. And that following had largely disappeared by the time, by the time Yitzchak had, uh, had come into his own. When Yitzchak come, had come into his own, it was really just his small clan. While Avram had that followers in the thousands, uh, Yitzchak's point that had uh, pretty much dwindled out. And Yaakov, again, also was not one that had thousands of followers. He had his family of under 70 people. 
we went down to Egypt, and then we were defined as a people by the world. Until that point, there were a few of us, a few people that knew us in Canaan. But we got down to Egypt, we were a separate people. Our brother Yosef was the uh, was the viceroy, was the second in command to the to the king. And people didn't really know that Yosef was different. People thought that Yosef was the was a regular Egyptian, was a regular Mitzri. But it was only when uh, when they were able to see his family come down and say, "Oh, he's different. He's a Jew." And the Jews started rapidly producing. We were a nation, but we were more a clan. And as large as our clan grew, we began the Paro began to fear us and fear that this clan could actually develop into a nation. And therefore, he enslaved us out of less of a sense of anti-Semitism, more out of a sense of fear and paranoia that another nation would come in and attack him and we would join up with this, with this invading army from the outside and take over his kingdom from the inside. That was what Pyro's fear was. It was ungrounded, it was unfounded, but that's what his fear was and that's why he decided to, to enslave us. Now, that did give us a sense of, of people, that did give us a sense of, of, uh, of a nation. But we didn't really come into our own as a nation with our own purpose and our own, our own, uh, our own reason to go forward until we were freed. At that moment when we were freed, when we went, when we were emancipated, when we went from slaves to free people, something that we can't picture what that moment was like, we try to relive it at the Seder night, we try to re-experience it and, and project onto what that must have been, that formed us as a people. Freedom, it was the pinnacle moment of our peoplehood until we got to Har Sinai. Freedom is more than just being able to know what you can and cannot do and be able to determine what you can and cannot do. Freedom is much more than that. Freedom allows you not only to determine what you do with your time, which is of tremendous consequence, because when I can decide what I do with my time, I can decide what my values are. When somebody else, what we spend our time on is a reflection of what we think is important. If I spend eight hours a day playing basketball, then what's important to me? Basketball. If I spend eight hours a day learning Torah, then what's important to me? Learning Torah. Four and four, I see them as equal. Right? How I spend my time is important, but when someone else determines how I spend my time, when I'm a slave and I don't get to decide my own time, even as a, as in a job, I get to determine my own time because I can always walk away. I can always say I quit. Right? So that's different than, than slavery where my master is determining what I do with my own time. That's something completely different. At that point where it becomes slavery, right? That's a benefit of itself, the freedom to choose what I want to do and be able to reflect my priorities. But freedom really is more than just choosing what I can do with my, with my time. It's being able to determine my destiny. And the Jewish people, for the first time in their lives, experienced the ability to determine their own destiny when they were led out of Egypt. And I think that's the reason the ability to, to the, the, the ability to determine one's own future, one's own destiny, one one's people's own path. I think that gives us a sense of who we are. And Jews for 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 millennia, it's been three thousand years since the moment when Pyro screamed and told us to get out and leave before all the firstborn, including him, die. Three millennia, three thousand years since that has happened. A little over 3,000 years. Since that great pinnacle moment, Jews have always come back and identified with that moment. And they've retold that story. Because it's the pinnacle moment in our, in our, in our history. No matter how observant or lack of observant or how assimilated a Jew has become, they've always come back to the Pesach night. Because that determines, that night determined and set forth who we are and who we would be forever. That, in my opinion, is why Pesach has played such a central role. What we're going to be doing over the next couple of videos in this coming week is we're going to be visiting the Seder night. And we're going to be explaining what is it exactly that we're doing. What's the nature of the mitzvah of what we call Sipur Yesias Mitzrayim, of the telling of, of the Seder night. That's what we're going to be examining over these next couple of videos and these next couple of days until we have Shir at the end of this week. And I hope that you'll... you'll Come and join me on this journey, this wonderful, glorious journey of understanding what it is exactly Kodesh Baruch Hu had in mind when he said, Vigara Tel Abincha, tell your children about this day. Zachar es right? Remember what Kodesh Baruch Hu did for us in Mitzrayim when he freed us. 
We have to understand exactly what our obligation is. Understand that Seder night is not just a festive night. It's not just a night where we sit for hours and hours and tell, our, tell the story. But it's a night where we can intimately relate to our Creator, intimately relate to our past and our identity. And the nature of that obligation of that night will become clear to us over the next few days. Can't wait.